welcome to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing. We're in the how-to section of the Totally Awesome Workshop. I'm going to do one of the favourite jobs I love, making ground bait for sea fishing, which is actually called chum, can you believe? So we're going to be making some chum today, and I assure you it's a horrible job, but boy, is it worth it. Let's get cracking. Right, if you guys think I'm wearing that lovely yellow jumper to do this job, you are so wrong. Even I have my limitations, and my wife's got more limitations you could ever believe. This is the tools of the trade. Let's get set up. First off, good sharp filleting knife. That is a priority. Don't have to be a fishing filleting knife. Get one from one of the supermarkets, get it really sharp. Then I got this chum chopper, which is got blade sharpened on the end of it. I had it welded up. It did have one out here, but I was chumming away too much with it and it snapped. And basically I put this inside the tub and I slam it up and down and it pulp, pulps all that meat up and the flesh up. It doesn't go through bones, you've got to cut the bones out. Right, now I've made up this, this is what I call my chum chopping tray, which I've cut a gap in the top up here. I can clamp in my mincer up here, I'll put it on later on, and then mince everything on the top of this. You can actually have that on the boat as well if you want. Mince it up on here, all the mush goes down here and it comes out the end. I've made a little shoot there, as you can see, straight into the water. That's if I'm using it neat. I'm not going to be using it neat. We're going to be going fishing for smaller species. And this time, we're going to be grinding up and mixing stuff with it. Right, the other thing you need is a bucket. I've got an old builder's gorilla tub. Handles on there, handles on here. I can move it around. When I've mashed it all up in there and I put bran with it, you know, to help soak up the particles of oil, I save all these ice cream cartons and they're perfect for filling out for one day because I put them in the freezer, they're nice and clean. Well, they're relatively clean, but they, you know, I call them clean. My wife wouldn't, but they go straight into the freezer, they're frozen down a dozen or so. When I want to go fishing, I just take them out, pop, pop out the whole block into my chum bag, hang it over the side, job done, hands, again, relatively clean. Not really clean, but enough. Well, now what I'm going to be using, which is what most sort of sharp people use, is bran, just dry bran. It's an agricultural horse feed. And a sack of this is vastly expensive, guys. At this time of writing, it's about eight pounds. Right time, right time of filming. Now, this is all it is, it's just dry horse feed. There we go. But boy, does it soak up those oil particles. It's brilliant. And when you put it in the water, it goes out in an enormous cloud all species of fish love to smell this stuff. Soaks the oil up. To be honest, it's like they say, don't go fishing without it. Right, if you're fishing for a deep water species, let's say pool beagle shark or tope in deeper water, 80, 90 feet, you want to get down, the brown is quite buoyant in the water. You want to get it down, and then I use sand. You can just use builder's sand, or the best sand really is straight off the beach because it's fairly gritty and grainy. And you can use sharp sand, which you buy at a sack, say, £1.50 for a sack, and by God, it will last you forever. You can, of course, mix the two together so that you've got surface attractant and deep water. I'm going to mix a bit of both because we go fishing tomorrow, and we'll see what we come up with tomorrow. But generally, I would say I use the sand for deep water sharking. Of course, the sand does not soak up the oil particles, but they're coated. Each one is coated with a bit of oil, and that sinks down faster. And there's no question it works. I've used it too many years. Right, most people use fish like mackerel or herring to chop up, but I've been to the trout farms and got all their cast-offs and leftovers. Ah, oh, yeah, look at it. Guts, heads, everything. But wait till I tell you why I'm using these trout. They are the best you can get. Well, the reason I use trout is because they're fed naturally on the fish farms on fish pellets, high-protein pellets, which have a high oil content. And their livers, the trout livers here, sorry for those who are just having their tea, but this is the way it is when you're, when you're a fisherman, is oil, all in here, absolutely. Mash this up, pulp it all up, and those bran particles will soak all this oil up. And I'm telling you, I've used these for years and years and years for all species, especially shark. They go nuts for it. So this is why I use trout. Well, you might say the other reason is it's free, and of course that's true as well. We've got a lot to do processing. It's like a fish factory here. Let's get cutting and hacking.
Now this is the fish feed that they feed them on, and that's what I brought the trout back in. That's a high protein feed, but there's high protein in here as well from all the juice that's come out of those trout guts. And I'm going to tip it straight on there. Okay, get yourself a rag, a little tip, because this paper's also going to soak up all that oil when you put it back in the storage. Woo, it's going to stink. So, dry off your gloves, get your bran. In here, I reckon, at least, at least, like a cookery course, isn't it? At least six or eight of these, double handfuls, big double handfuls, because you want these particles to soak all that oil up. Right, as you can see there, it's all lovely. It looks like sort of somebody's breakfast cereal, but I assure you, you will not want to eat it. So, next phase, get your ice cream tubs, scoop it up, get it all on the inside, try not to get it on the outside. You want to uh, poke it down with your fingers so it's nice and compacted. Fill those up. And a little tip here is don't fill them right to the top because ice always expands, water expands and there's fluid in here, it's going to expand. If I put it right to the top, and I've done it many times before because I'm greedy and I want to get as much chum in there as I can, it's going to burst the lid off and it goes everywhere even though it's frozen. So get it, so you've just got a little gap at the top for the expansion of the ice. Pack it down tight but that will swell, I can assure you, a lot and also the oil will also rise to the surface especially if we don't freeze it. I'm going to do a couple frozen and hopefully tomorrow some that are they say we've prepared earlier ready to go. Okay what I'm going to do now with all the leftover heads and carcasses I sectioned them all up and I'm going to put them in the bucket straight into a big paint leaf uh, what is this one a big it's been about a 15 litre bucket an old paint tub and I'll store those in there and I'll put them in a giant onion sack ready for probably my shark fishing so just Put those in there and I'm going to cap it off with some bran, just a layer of bran, leave a gap at the top again for the expansion and then that bran over a period of time even in the freezer will soak into all this, this carcasses. So that can be poured straight out into the onion sack, tied to the side of the rope and I'm away sharking. Now another way of doing it is when you get whole fish rather than carcasses like this. Quite why somebody's not eating that I don't know. It's a great big chunk of uh, double figure trout there. Is take your fillets off it. Obviously be very very careful with a sharp filleting knife and rubber gloves. It's not a good mixture normally. But I don't really know how old this meat is on here. So it's definitely definitely not edible. You can see there the beautiful red meat there, which is not for me eating, it's full of oil, but the fish love it. Right, I'll pull this lot off just to show you. I put it on my board, and then what I really do is try and scrape this. I'll do it that way so you can see it. Hold, hold a knife against the skin and clean the meat off the skin. Because if we're going to use the mincer to get it fine, the skin clogs it. There you can actually see that skin is pretty useless. Bits of meat left on it, but that will be a nightmare to get through the mincer and it will clog. Get the meat off, that's what's going to break down. Don't get your fingers in the mincer. It's easily done. If you have to push the meat down, get a piece of wood, block of wood and push on the meat. Do it slowly. Now this is to get it very, very fine. And this one we're going to mix some of that sand with. There you can see it coming out the end. Just like a butcher shop. For all intents and purposes, we could be sausage making. I've mashed all this up now with the mincer, nice and fine. And now I'm going to put the sand with it, as you can see. I'm going to mix it up with my fingers this time. 
get it all in. Now this I've got it all mixed up, you can either use as balls of ground bait, like this, just in a patty with gloves, I thoroughly recommend the use of gloves, and you can just drop that down and it will sink, and it will spiral off as it goes. So you can use it as a ball of ground bait to sink straight down the bottom, that probably won't break up all oh, for 30, 40, 50 feet, if you just drop it in slowly. If you throw it in, it will smash apart, obviously. Or, failing that, just pile it all into your ice cream cartons, just like that. And when you take it out, you can put it in your chum bag and it's all ready to go. Now, the advantage of this is it doesn't swell because obviously it's sand. It's only the bran that swells. Right, when you get it all mixed up, my suggestion is put it in an onion sack in a mesh bag like this first because getting it out, you're going to get gunky, you spill it over the boat. It is, trust me, a nightmare to get off the bottom of your boat. So why not put it in the bag first and then all you do is tie off the bag with your rope, drop the bag into the bucket with the rope, then when you go fishing all you do is just lift it out, put it in the water with the gloves, keep your boat clean. Well there you go, we're all prepped up now, we've got the freezer fired up, oh, I've got the paint tubs absolutely loaded and I stacked them straight in the freezer like that. They can go out whenever they want and then, oh up we come. In go the little cartons like right? these ice cream tubs and they fit inside the chum bags perfectly, they're just right. And I like to use these from frozen. And that's all in there. Five or six, five or six paint tubs in there, and I'll fill that right to the top with obviously lots of ice cream cartons. Right, we've got it all packed down, we've got the chum ready. You've seen the totally awesome fishing way, how to make good chum. Now we're also going to take, as well as the mesh bags, we're going to take this sort of, like a bait dropper, all drilled out with holes, we're going to put some in there. But here's your final tip guys, if you leave this stuff in the sun, a greenhouse especially, with a lid tight for a couple of days, it smells beautiful. It is good stuff, the best you can get for sure. <coughs> Right, we've done all that nasty stuff, and here is, as they say in the cooking program, one that I prepared earlier, which you saw. Now look, this has been left overnight, and the amount of oil, this is not water in here. I put no water with that at all. All the oil is exuded out the meat, out the flesh, out the livers of, you know, those pieces of uh, trout, rainbow trout, and they floated on the surface here. I'm all ready to put it over, but I'm putting it off as long as I can. Now if you just take a look back there, pretty breezy we've got about four northerly blowing here where we are so it's pretty breezy, breezy but you can see the surface of the sea now I'm going to put it in the water and you'll see what happens and how much oil comes out this fish <coughs> just just take my word for it don't spill this inside your boat that is absolutely fair I'm going to float it because I, yeah, I've had done this before look at the oil coming out of there folks that is just pure oil. I'm going to save that. Tip of oil, actually. It's slack tight. It's always good to put a lot of this in a slack time. And there we go. And in a little while, about five minutes, you'll see that same surface of the sea will be slicked off with the oil. We're one step closer to fishing. And we can actually, it's been in 30 seconds, and already the wind's drifted the surface oil way back there and I'm going to drop this down a bit deeper leave it hanging down there and hopefully it's going to get some fish coming up off the bottom get attracted by all those particles of brand and the smell of the oil we've waited about an hour chum's obviously starting to work we've got the first fish it's not very big but it is what everybody normally hates a goldfish but I tell you what they can smell anything and if they're starting to come hopefully the other species are going to start, start coming as well. Fish on. Fish on. Feels like a bream. Need to avoid those other lines. Well, we've got that many rods out, we're going to get something, but... Is he digging like a bream, yeah? Oh yeah, like that bream. looks breamy. Yep. Oh, yeah. oh yes, yeah. He's, all, he's going to be a bream. And this is the species for light tackle fishing. No question of that. It's going really well, actually. That might be that might be a net job. 
That's not bad fish actually, is it, Phil? It feels very really good. It feels good. I'll get the net. If you just take a look at it, we'll. Uh... I've got it. No, bream, yeah. Definitely. Oh, see, another. Oh, nice fish. Is the drag okay? Yeah, the drag's fine. Let's just break away. Oh, we just get him there. There he is. In case we lose it, folks. A chum caught black bream. There he is. Oh, nice bream, Phil. Yeah, nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fish. Look at the spikes on that, kitty. That's good. Fantastic fish, aren't we? Oh, he's got his pin up for us and everything. Fantastic, aren't what we? a beautiful fish. And I love, I've always loved the colour of that nose and eye there. So I'll tell you what, it's worth cutting all those chum out. This is actually the second one we caught. And def I think they're definitely on that uh, that chum. So if you put that bag down, I think they're on that definitely. It's right down the centre of the slick, this one. So, Whee. yeah, there's lines everywhere. Oh, another nice keeper. That's, nice I'll tell you what, it's not, I think it's bigger than the other one. Yeah, it's not caught with any lines. Oh, good. Oh, good thing. Fat. That's two and a half, I think two and a bit that one. Beautiful fish. He's over two, isn't he? Magnificent. Definitely over two. And GS, look. I love that eye, oh, I can't keep away from the eyes. I have the same trouble with women, of course. What about that last fish of the day, best fish of the day, in the chum slick, time to go back. And the fish too. Oh. Well we just said a minute ago that that was the last fish and the best fish. And as we were about to bring the rods in, it bump, it looks like another brim, well it feels like another brim, I've not seen it yet. Oh. Yep, yeah, yep. Oh, nice fish. Nice fish, that one. That will be about another three pounder, my guess. That's a beauty. Let's take a quick look at him and get him away. You can see the chum bag as well. Three pounds and a big fat three pounder. I don't know how we're going to pack up now. We've still got to pull the anchor. <laughs>